Okay, now we come to the exciting Q&A portion of the program. Uh, we have five excellent books, and because of that, five excellent authors, it's possible I've reversed the cause and effect. So we're going to talk to them a little bit and find out some easy things about their books. Hopefully it won't be too strenuous. It should be about a 10-minute Q&A after which the authors and everyone else can celebrate however you see fit. So uh, let's start. Come up here, take seats in whatever order you want, except this one. That's mine. So you, everybody fill in the seats, all the honorees. And I'm going to ask all of you the same question, and the mic's going to get passed down. Then I'll ask another question, and the mic will get passed back. It's fairly straightforward choreography. If, if you don't have an answer, that's, that's a good order. But wait, we're missing a... Who are we missing? No, we're missing you. Alright, All right, everybody in the bar be quiet, because the authors will be speaking now. Thank you, everybody in the bar. Uh, if you don't have an answer, or you don't have a quick answer, because it's intended to move briskly, you can say pass, or I pass, or I'll pass, or anything like that. So, all right, here we go. It's quick, it's just a moderator's dozen, which is basically just a dozen. We don't have any imagination. All right, the first question, I guess start me up. Well, we can start the mic down. Okay. Uh, state your name and where were you born? Akwe KMAZ, and I was born in Umwahia, Nigeria. Moriel Rothman Zecker, I was born in Jerusalem, Israel, Palestine. Nana Kwame J. Benya, Queens, New York. Woo! Gang, gang. Uh, Hannah Lilithasadi, born in New York City, New York. Woo! Uh, Lydia Kiesling, born in Tel Aviv, Israel. What would you say was the first impulse for your book? Uh, having a baby. <laughs> uh, if we're gonna be that brief about it, some people I know who died. You don't have to be that brief. You can go any, anywhere from three to let's say fifty words. <laughs> I don't want to make it really like mean and dark, uh, but yeah, some people who were hurt that I saw, and it was that. Oh, I, I am allowed some follow-ups. Where were? Did you see them all in the same place, or is it a new, different incident? All over the place. <laughs> all over. The place. Okay. Um, writing a story about what didn't happen, but what almost did, or what easily could have. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the dark. Um, being suicidal and feeling like it was specifically a call home where home was a spirit world. Where did you write most of your book? And you can interpret this any, any way you want, either a venue, a piece of furniture, something more conceptual. I wrote most of Freshwater in an attic apartment during a winter in Syracuse. I wrote most of Sadness as a White Bird in a garden apartment during a fall in Jerusalem. <laughs> um, several different uh, apartments in Syracuse also. Not the same apartment. <laughs> no, not the same apartment. But, you know, also in Syracuse now. Uh, I wrote most of Sonora in my little tiny office, the litter box right next to it in Brooklyn. Uh, I wrote The Golden State in Java on Ocean Coffee House in Ing the Ingleside neighborhood in San Francisco. What would you say your average writing day was? And, uh, let's do this. Uh, when it was going well, what was your maximum number of hours that you could put in on a day? And then what was the minimum where you felt like you were working, that, like you hadn't wasted the day? Um, I can't write more than two hours at a time for both uh, brain reasons and financial reasons um, and yeah so I, I wrote the book in 69 days nice and, um, <laughs> and were there zero I was going to stretch out over a lot of time were there zero work days where you began to despair of momentum or not really oh yeah many, many. Maybe between the six, the 69 days are like spread out over a lot oh, of time oh it's 69 days of work spread yeah. out over many decades I have a spreadsheet this, yeah my Four decades. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna pass the mic now. Right. I'm trying to. Oh, I was working uh, full time.
time, I think while I was, yeah, definitely, for a kind of very busy person while I was working on Snow Star, I would take vacation days and write, and that's how I wrote it. Um, while I was at Syracuse, I was in the MFA program there, I once overheard George talking to someone else right before I was going to meet with him, and it was like, he was like in the last stages of thinking of the Bardo stuff, and he like very casually told the guy, oh, I've been doing like 16 hours a day. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I asked him after that, like, for real, like, are you doing 16 hours a day? And he said, yeah. And then so I tried to do that, I couldn't do it. So um, I want to say maybe like a, like so, somewhere we're like eight-ish. And then um, for me, like, even if I, you know, jot down like one sentence on my phone, that's like something. And just because one of the reasons I asked this question is that I love to hear about the real world circumstances. This was eight in a writing book. Yeah, that was right. in the writing programs, which makes it a lot easier. Right, so you have a multiplier. You have a convenience multiplier. Sure. <laughs> um, anything I got in before 9 a.m. felt worthwhile, so it usually meant about uh, two, two and a half hours. And then at 9 a.m., I think very, like, on the dot at 9 a.m., I think something about the sort of capitalistic <laughs> 9 to 5 schedule coming into being. <laughs> I couldn't write it after that, and I'd spend the rest of the 9 to 5 questioning my legitimacy as a human <laughs> being and a profession, etc. So. Honestly, I have no idea because it was really quite a blur. I would guess maybe two to three hours. Um, I was in my first year of the same MFA, MFA program at Syracuse, which I dropped out of in my second year. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, so like I technically had time to write, but I was also deeply unhappy because Syracuse in the winter is a cold, unforgiving tundra on the coast. Yeah, what were the daylight hours in the desert again? They were oh, better? Yeah, it's 80 degrees there. Yeah. It's terrible that it gets dark early. I don't know who invented this. What was the one book not by you that you thought of most while you were writing? It was actually this book by this writer from Burkina Faso called Malidoma Somme, and he wrote this book called Of Water and the Spirit. And for me, it's a non-fiction book, and he talks about the indigenous faith traditions of his ethnic group back in Burkina Faso. And for me, it was really a seminal text while I was writing Freshwater because it was the first time I had heard someone describe colonialism as a replacement of realities that like people had come in and what was real before was no longer real after and that sentiment is the sen is the core of the ontology that's used in freshwater and so yeah that was the book i think or the birds die in galilee which is a collection of poetry by, by mahmoud darwish um one of the um, prominent and most well-known palestinian national poets um, and this book in a lot of ways is a conversation with one of Darwish's poems, uh, A Soldier Dreams of White Lilies. Um, I don't think there's any one specific book, but um, I think the one that kind of broke sort of my brain open and kind of made me feel like I had permission to do what I want to do was Mumbo Jumbo by Ishmael Reed. And um, yeah, I think kind of being sort of funny and irreverent and talking about what I wanted to talk about, um, that was big for me. Yeah, I don't think I have a book in particular either, but I did read a lot of Mahmoud Darwish and Yehuda Michai in college, so I was thinking of the poetry of that land, and um, William Faulkner uh, throughout my life over and over again. Um, I think probably The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. Um, What's the art form that you feel most closely allied with other than writing? And you know, it varies. Sometimes people have said stand-up comedy, jazz, music, cooking. Is there one thing that you think is the same as what you do that isn't writing? The questions are getting harder. <laughs> <laughs> Toward the end, they're, they're impossible. You can pass. You, you're allowed in, in limitless passes. If you yeah, I, I mean, I think the one that I probably care about the most, um, no, I don't know. There's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no need to apologize. This is a, another art form, right? Not just another, another art form. Okay, I answered a lot of the question. <laughs> um, I danced when I was young, and I always feel like somehow it has this, it's like a very pure form of language. 
Um, but I think music is the thing that I aspire to the most, and perhaps I'm the most envious of. As well. Playing, singing, as puts it. I mean, yeah, I can't sing, so <laughs> and I can't really play either. But I think just like as I, I would like to be music when I write. Yeah. I think there's definitely something to the music thing. I don't sing or play like an instrument for real, but I have like a little beat machine. I think there's something about like the structuring and like trying to get something to crescendo. Um, and also, with stand-up comedy, to me that's writing too, and I, th I think I try to like squeeze that in. It's a lot easier because I think writing crowds are nice, so <laughs> I, think, I think I'm way funnier than I am in real life because of that, but um, I think that's something too. Um, I think I would say painting. Um, not that I know much from painting, but my partner is a painter, and I actually feel in a lot of ways indebted to a painter for this, for this book. Um, we were at a Shabbat dinner in, in Berkeley, California, and I was thinking about writing a book, but I was like, I don't know, some days it feels like I have what to say, and other days I don't have anything to say, and I'm just this. And she said to me, she said, oh, I paint every day. And I said, well, what if you don't know what to paint? She said, that's okay. I stare at a blank canvas for my allotted hour and a half. And I was like, okay, I could do that. I could definitely stare at a blank Word document <laughs> for an hour and a half, even if I don't have what to say that given day. I think for me, I would say film. I make video arts as well, and and a lot of the times when I write, I'm imagining like the dialogue as scenes, or I, I really just daydream a lot, and everything plays in my head first, and then I transcribe that into a book. I have three very short one-word answer type questions left, and then we'll let everybody get on with their evening. If you were reviewing your own book, what's one word that you would use? <laughs> <laughs> Melodramatic. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> okay, I'll say what I would like first. Fun. Haunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frantic. Frantic. Alright, this is a hypothetical. You're offered two choices, you have to pick one. One is that you can travel the world, see anybody you want, but you can only read one book and all other books are erased from your memory. The second is that you're locked in a room and can never leave, but you have access to all books. Which do you pick? Yeah, I'm going to pick the first one. Travel the world, one book. Well, I mean, what else, what do I get to, what else can, do I get to do? Book. You can do normal life otherwise. Eat whatever food you want, conversations. Sleep as much as you want. What about, can you like have like a kid? Yeah, you can have a kid. In, sure. in the room? Are they in the room too? <laughs> oh, you're in the room? No. No, I'm just saying like. No, you're in the room alone. Okay, so you can just live or you can be locked in a room. Locked in okay, a room. I'm gonna live. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'll slip you food on the trip. You only get one note. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right, that's, fine. yeah, I still think. Noted. <laughs> Travel the world one book. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I like books as, this, as much as the next guy. <laughs> uh, travel the world. <laughs> I think I would travel the world with Zadie Smith's On Beauty. Um, that's a book that I've reread three times and I cannot get over how phenomenally good it is. Um, I would travel the world and I would take the ultimate hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. <laughs> The last question involves everybody passing their books down to me if you have them, or if you don't, I'll put them on the table, it's fine. All right, and so this question is for now four of you, because one of you read the last page for his reading selection, so I have a different question for you, which I'll ask you first. Your question is, if we understood the depth of your resolve, would we drown in it? <laughs> For everybody, yes. Yes. <laughs> so for everybody else, your question is this, what is the last word of your book? What? And so you, let's, uh, I, can, I guess we can go in order, we, we can start down with you, and I'm going to check it and give you a thumbs up or thumbs down as we go. Final word of your book. Oh, not including acknowledgments of the word problem. Mouth. Okay, I believe that is correct. Oh, I have another list that I made. All right, let's say this one. That is correct. It is math. I 
think it's two, like T O O. I have you down as go. Is that uh, correct? Yeah. You can check and let me know. I knew it was a short part. monosyllabic word. <laughs> go to. Oh yeah. Dark. That is correct. Mama. Mama is correct. <laughs> I just want to thank all of the authors and all of the